If you've ever dreamed of a real-life One Piece adventure, with a touch of Zoro's swordsmanship and Luffy's boundless spirit, you're in for a treat. Prepare to set sail on the high seas of history as we unravel the tales of the world's most notorious pirates. These scallywags weren't hunting for the legendary One Piece, but they did chase treasures more valuable than gold. From Blackbeard's terrifying reign to the fierce Anne Bonny, get ready to dive into the salty waters of pirate lore. But don't worry, no devil fruits required for this voyage. Ahoy there, adventurous souls, and welcome back to our channel. If you're as obsessed with pirates as we are, then you're in for a swashbuckling treat. Today, we're embarking on an epic journey across the seven seas to uncover the legends of the most infamous pirates in history. These daring souls didn't need a rubbery body or three sword style to make their mark, but they left a trail of riches, terror, and tales in their wake. From the Caribbean to the Far East, their stories are a treasure trove of adventure, cunning tactics, and of course, massive loot. But before we set sail, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell, because we've got a shitload of exciting content coming your way. Let's dive right in. I, Mateus, our first pirate on this wild ride across history's high seas, is none other than the legendary Blackbeard. Known to the crown as Edward Teach, this English pirate ruled the waters of the West Indies and the eastern coast of the American colonies in the early 18th century. But here's the kicker, if you cross paths with him, you'd likely see something straight out of a fantasy story. Blackbeard sported a fearsome appearance, complete with slow-burning fuses tucked into his hat and beard, giving off an eerie, smoky aura during battles. If that wasn't enough to send shivers down your spine, his ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, was equipped with a frightening 40 cannons. But old Teach wasn't all brute force. He was a cunning strategist, often using his fearsome image to avoid violence altogether. He'd tie slow matches to his beard and light them during raids, making sure his enemies understood just who they were dealing with. Now, who does that remind you of? Maybe a certain swordsman from One Piece? But let's talk treasure. Me hearties. Blackbeard's most famous haul was the treasure he captured from the French slave ship La Concorde. It's estimated to be worth around 400,000 pieces of eight, which, in today's booty, would be close to $16 million. Now that's enough to make even Gold Roger or Luffy from One Piece turn their heads. So, whether you call him Blackbeard or see a glimpse of Roronoa Zoro in his swagger, Blackbeard left behind a legacy of fear, power, and buried treasure. Our next pirate on the high seas of history is none other than the infamous Anne Bonny. Now, before we delve into her tale, have you ever wondered what it'd be like if Monkey D Luffy himself stepped into the world of pirates during the golden age of piracy? Well, Anne Bonny might just give you a glimpse. Anne, originally hailing from Ireland, became a pirate in the early 18th century and was a member of Calico Jack's crew. But here's the twist in the tale. Anne concealed her true identity by dressing as a man. Imagine her swagger and confidence rivaling that of the fearless pirate captain, Monkey D. Now, what Anne was most famous for was her fierce spirit and her fearless approach to piracy. She wasn't one to shy away from a brawl, and she stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. Anne, alongside fellow pirate Mary Reed, played a pivotal role in Calico Jack's crew, fighting and carousing with the best of them. But let's talk treasure, shall we? Anne Bonny's treasure isn't as well documented as some others, but the stories tell of her stealing and plundering across the high seas. Some legends even claim that she buried a vast hoard of treasure, including gold, silver, and jewels, somewhere off the coast of Florida. Now, if you were to put a price tag on Anne's ill-gotten gains today, you'd be looking at millions upon millions of dollars, enough to rival the One Piece itself. So, as we salute Anne Bonny's spirit and audacity, keep your eyes peeled for more tales of notorious pirates coming your way. But don't forget to join our crew by hitting that subscribe button and giving us a like, me hearties. Now we're sailing straight into the legend of the notorious Captain Kidd, a name that strikes fear into the hearts of sailors and landlubbers alike. Kidd, known for his cunning and ruthless ways, hailed from Scotland and terrorized the high seas during the late 17th century. But let's veer away from our beloved anime references for a moment and delve into his tale. Captain Kidd's notoriety stemmed from his exploits as a pirate hunter turned pirate himself. Yup, he started off trying to rid the seas of swashbucklers, but ended up joining their ranks. It's like trying to be a marine biologist and ending up swimming with sharks. Now, what makes Captain Kidd truly intriguing is his treasure, or rather, the treasure that's become the stuff of legends. 
Kidd was said to have buried a vast fortune on Gardner's Island, off the coast of New York. The loot, consisting of gold, silver, and precious jewels, has become the stuff of pirate lore, with many treasure hunters attempting to find it over the centuries. In today's terms, Captain Kidd's treasure could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Just imagine the adventures and perils one might face in search of such a hoard. Our next pirate salty scallywag goes by the name of Bartholomew Roberts, but ye can call him Black Bart for short. Hailing from Wales, Black Bart earned a reputation as one of the most successful pirates in history. Ah, but there's more to him than meets the eye. What set Black Bart apart from the rest of the seafaring scoundrels was his strict pirate code. Aye, he had a code that all his crew had to follow, from sharing the booty fairly to keeping the ship spick and span. He even banned gambling and womanizing on his ship. Can ye believe it? Now, onto his treasure Black Bart, is rumored to have amassed one of the largest pirate holes in history, with loot estimated at about 108 million pounds in today's doubloons. This haul included gold, silver, jewels, and more, plundered from over 400 ships. But me hearties, there's a twist in this tale. When he met his untimely demise in a bloody battle with the Royal Navy, legend has it that he wrapped himself in chains and threw the keys overboard, ensuring his treasure's hidden location would remain a mystery. Of course, we'll drop the pirate accent for now. Our next pirate on the list is none other than the infamous Henry Morgan. No, not Captain Morgan, the one on the spiced rum bottles, but a real historical figure. Henry Morgan was born in Wales, and he's famous for being one of the most successful and ruthless buccaneers in the Caribbean during the late 17th century. A buccaneer, by the way, was like a pirate, but with a fancy French name. Morgan is best known for his audacious raids on Spanish settlements and ships in the Caribbean. He had a particular knack for taking heavily fortified Spanish cities, like Panama City, in 1671. He was also quite the strategist, using tactics that would make even modern military commanders nod in approval. As for treasure, Morgan scored big. He plundered towns, stole vast amounts of gold and silver, and had one heck of a career. In fact, he became so famous that even back in England, they couldn't resist knighting him. Sir Henry Morgan, who would have thought, right? But, as is often the case with pirates, Morgan's life was marred with controversy and betrayal. Despite his service to England, he ended up in jail for a time, and his treasure was the stuff of legend. Our next scallywag on the list is none other than Calico Jack, also known as John Rackham. This pirate was a bit of a showman, often wearing flashy calico clothing to strike fear into the hearts of his victims. Calico Jack hailed from England and sailed the high seas during the early 18th century, a time when piracy was in full swing. He's best known for having two female pirates in his crew, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed. Now, that's something you don't hear about every day. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Calico Jack started his pirate career as a quartermaster on another pirate ship, Charles Vane. However, he quickly grew tired of taking orders and decided to captain his own ship, the Revenge. One of his most famous exploits was capturing a British sloop called the William. What makes this incident remarkable is that the Williams crew was enjoying a good old drunken snooze when Calico Jack and his crew quietly boarded the ship. That's right folks, the pirates took the ship without firing a single shot. As for treasure, Calico Jack wasn't exactly swimming in gold doubloons. He did plunder some booty here and there, but it wasn't a fortune. However, his reputation as a fearsome pirate lives on, mainly because of his association with Anne Bonny and Mary Reed. Our next pirate is Stade Bonnet, and his story is quite unique in the world of piracy. Steed Bonnet was a wealthy plantation owner from Barbados, who for reasons still somewhat mysterious today, decided to abandon his comfortable life and become a pirate. This earned him the nickname, The Gentleman Pirate. In 1717, Bonnet outfitted a ship he called the Revenge, and set sail as a pirate captain. Unlike many pirates of his time, he had no prior experience in piracy. It's said that he turned to a life of crime due to a midlife crisis or dissatisfaction with his marriage. Despite his lack of expertise, Bonnet managed to capture several ships and was somewhat successful as a pirate. His fame grew, and he was even known to be literate a rarity among pirates. One interesting fact about Steed Bonnet is his encounter with the infamous Blackbeard. In 1717, the two pirates joined forces for a short time. Blackbeard used Bonnet's ship, the Revenge, as his flagship during this period. However, Bonnet eventually turned away from piracy and sought a pardon from the authorities. 
He was captured, tried, and sentenced to hang in Charleston, South Carolina. His plea for clemency was unsuccessful, and he met his end at the gallows in December 1718. Our next pirate tale takes us into the daring adventures of Samuel Bellamy, better known as Black Sam. And I promise, no more pirate accent from here on. Black Sam Bellamy was an English pirate who terrorized the Atlantic Ocean during the early 18th century, often referred to as the Golden Age of Piracy. Unlike many pirates of his time, Bellamy didn't fit the stereotypical image of a swashbuckling rogue. He was young, charismatic, and known for his eloquence. One remarkable aspect of Bellamy's pirate career was his egalitarian and democratic approach to governance aboard his ship, the wider galley. He believed in fair treatment of his crew and even established a pirate code that set rules and regulations for the crew's conduct. In 1717, Bellamy and his crew captured the wider, a heavily armed British slave ship. They turned it into their flagship, armed it with more cannons, and continued their piratical escapades. One of the most tragic aspects of Black Sam's story was his untimely demise. In April 1717, while sailing off the coast of Cape Cod, the wider galley encountered a severe nor'easter and tragically sank. Bellamy and most of his crew perished in the wreck. In recent years, the wreck of the wider has been discovered, shedding new light on the life of this famous pirate. Among the recovered treasures were numerous artifacts, including gold coins and jewelry. So, that's the tale of Black Sam Bellamy, a pirate who sought fairness and equality aboard his ship, and whose shipwreck legacy continues to captivate modern treasure hunters and historians alike. Now gather round for the tale of Benjamin Hornigold, a pirate captain whose story be filled with twists and turns upon the high seas. Benjamin Hornigold was born in England in 1680, and like many of his time, he eventually turned to a life of piracy. He initially served as a privateer during the War of Spanish Succession, which earned him some experience in naval combat and the cunning ways of the sea. But it be after the war that Hornigold fully embraced the pirate's life. He sailed the waters of the Caribbean during the early 18th century, amassing a crew of swarthy buccaneers and taking to piracy with gusto. One of his most famous acts was the capture of a sloop commanded by a young man named Edward Teach, who would later be known as the infamous Blackbeard. Teach served as Hornigold's lieutenant for a time before setting out on his own fearsome pirate career. Now you might be wondering, what set Hornigold apart from other pirates? Well, he had a peculiar code, or articles as they were called. These articles strictly forbade the crew from plundering fellow pirates or engaging in excessive drunkenness while on board the ship. This code may seem unusual for a pirate, but it kept order among the crew and ensured a certain level of discipline. But the tides of fortune turned against Hornigold when he and his crew attacked a British merchant ship known as the William. The crew had no knowledge of the ship's cargo, which included valuable items belonging to various powerful individuals. This act of piracy drew the ire of the British Crown. Facing mounting pressure and an ever-tightening noose from naval authorities, Hornigold decided to accept a royal pardon in 1718, essentially retiring from piracy. He was offered the position of pirate hunter, chasing down his former comrades on the high seas. Hornigold's final days are shrouded in mystery, but his legacy lives on in the annals of piracy. It'd be time to tell the tale of Mary Reed, one of history's most notorious lady pirates. Mary's story be one of intrigue, deception, and adventure on the high seas. Mary Red was born in England in the late 17th century and spent much of her early life disguised as a boy. She adopted this ruse after her brother died and her mother believed it would help secure financial support from her deceased brother's family. This disguise served her well and set the stage for her future as a pirate. In her youth, Mary Red became a soldier and later a sailor, joining various military units and fighting in conflicts across Europe. But it was her eventual arrival in the Caribbean that would change the course of her life forever. Mary Red found herself in the midst of a pirate crew commanded by the infamous pirate captain Jack Rackham, also known as Calico Jack. Rackham had no idea that Mary was, in fact, a woman, and she kept her true identity hidden from the crew. Alongside another notorious female pirate, Anne Bonny, Mary Red became an integral part of Rackham's crew. The two women were known for their fierce fighting spirit, and many believed them to be among the most ruthless pirates of their time. However, their piratical escapades would eventually come to an end. In 1720, Rackham and his crew, including Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, were captured by pirate hunters and brought to trial. During the trial, both Mary and Anne claimed they were pregnant, which by law, 
prevented them from being hanged. Mary, however, did not live long enough to give birth and passed away in prison. So, me hearties, that be the tale of Mary Red, a woman who defied societal norms and made her mark in history as one of the most infamous lady pirates to sail the seven seas. If ye enjoyed this voyage through the annals of pirate law, be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, in the world of piracy, the line between fact and legend be as elusive as the horizon at sea.